the Ti Shan Wen clan became tyrannical, slaughtering any cultivation clan who opposed them. Those who refused to bend the knee rebelled. United, they launched the Sunshot Campaign. Despite aiding in the Wen's defeat, the Yiling Patriarch chose a ghostly path. Although his intentions were righteous, he was a heretic, dying when his adoptive brother laid siege to the burial mounds in the Yilin region. Wei Wuxian, the founder of demonic cultivation, has been dead for 13 years, until the alleged lunatic, Mo Shen Yu, bent on revenge, uses his blood in a forbidden resurrection ritual, sacrificing his soul, summoning Wei Wuxian to carry out the Mo clan's destruction. A kick from his cousin and cowardly servant awakens the newly possessed lunatic. He quickly gains his bearings, finding three cuts on his arm. Healing them allows him to remain amongst the living. Kicking the cousin in the face, he steals a donkey, chasing them back to Moa Manor, as two young cultivators arrive moments before. Madame Mo begins explaining the village zombie problem when Wei Wuxian trips, falling into the manor. One of the young cultivators catches him. He notices the Lan clan's forehead ribbon. Smirking, he quickly resumes his lunatic act and humiliates his aunt. Then, accusing his cousin of stealing his cultivating tools, promises to cut off one of their hands next time. That night, finding the young Master Moa dead and his left arm missing, the servant accuses the lunatic of murder. Finding a spirit attraction flag on the body, one of Wei Wuxian's inventions, the young cultivator tells a hysterical Madame Mo it was the work of a demon. One of the scars heals. Revenge it is. Another vanishes after the servant is possessed. The young cultivators signal for help as the final one heals. Madame Ma is already dead, the demonic left arm possessing her. Wei Wuxian uses his cultivation to reawaken the corpses, helping the young cultivators. Before exposing himself, the sound of a gu tin pierces the air, stopping the demon in its tracks. It's Lan Wanzi. Wei Wuxian flees, naming his donkey Little Apple, guiding it with one on a stick. Before long, it gets caught in an immortal binding net, prompting the owner to check on it. The boy sees him, recognizing the body, apparently also a member of the Lan Ling Jing clan. Wei Wuxian figures the lunatic must be the illegitimate son of the clan's leader. The boy immediately attacks him after mentioning his mother. He uses demonic cultivation to pin him to the ground, recognizing his sword. The boy threatens that his uncle will find out. Right after asking who that might be, Zhang Cheng, Wei Wuxian's former martial brother, appears, which makes the boy his nephew, Jing Ling, who attacks him for using demonic cultivation on his uncle's order. Lan Wanzi steps in, saving him, and warning the other cultivators that the demonic arm escaped Moa Village. Three young cultivators start fighting, accidentally discovering a cave with a strange heavenly maiden statue. There's a red glow as it suddenly springs to life. It's the demonic left arm. The young cultivators don't stand a chance. Wei Wuxian has no choice. He grabs some bamboo, makes a flute, and begins to play trying to summon the strongest creature he can, shocking everyone when the Yiling Patriarch's infamous ghost general Wen Ning appears subduing the statue. When the cultivators attack, Wei Wuxian switches up his tune, calming the general, but Lan Wanzi appears, grabbing his wrist. He quickly orders the general to flee. Before either can say a word, the lightning whip Zadian cracks from behind, but Lan Wanzi stops it strumming his gutsin. Clan leader Zhang Cheng calls Wei Wuxian out, whipping him. He becomes frustrated when nothing happens. Zedian separates souls from possessed bodies, but since he was summoned and healed the scars, it isn't working on him. His nephew explains that he's a lunatic, attracted to anything that moves. Upon hearing this, Wei Wuxian jokes that Zhang Cheng isn't his type, but Lan Wanzi, on the other hand, it's decided Mo Shen Yu will come to the Lan clan's cloud recesses. Upon arrival, he remembers studying there, having a flashback to his youth. Lan Wanzi tries to stop Wei Wuxian from sneaking in at night with Emperor's Smile, a regional alcoholic beverage, prompting a fight between the two, since the Lan clan has strict rules, though Wei Wuxian couldn't care less. 
his opponent is steadfast in upholding them. In class, the teacher gives up on reading the rules as punishment and quizzes Wei Wuxian on his cultivation knowledge, which is surprisingly good for the class clown. When faced with a hypothetical situation, he suggests harnessing the resentful energy of the dead. They already use spiritual energy, so why not? The instructor kicks him out. There's no way of controlling it. The cultivation world would renounce him if he tried. On Beilin Lake, the Wen clan attempts to purge an evil creature after it attacks a boat full of people, failing, letting it swim towards Gusu, the Lan clan's territory. Nie Huai Sang offers to write the Lan clan's rules three times, taking on Wei Wu Xian's punishment in exchange for helping him study. They're caught making their way to the library pavilion, leaving him alone with Lan Wanzi, who supervises him for the next month. When his punishment is up, he decides to prank Lan Wanzi by replacing his poetry book with smut, provoking him. The two almost fight again. Meanwhile, bodies begin to float to the surface of Bilin Lake downstream. While their teacher is away for a conference, the young cultivator disciples tag along to investigate the recent water ghost sightings. Lan Wanzi wonders why they brought the others. While his older brother figures he was happy they came, his demeanor says otherwise. The scent of rice wine distracts Wei Wuxian, colliding with Xin Zexuan's boat, who says he'll be fine if the Zhang clan stay away from him. When Ye Huai Sang comes between them, diffusing the situation, a water ghost leaps out of the water. The young cultivators spring into action, saving the townsfolk, and head to Bilin Lake to find the source. Water ghosts usually appear when someone drowns, but the locals don't recognize the corpses. Wei Wuxian starts jumping yelling to get Lan Wanzi's attention, and flips his boat to reveal water ghosts clinging to the bottom, impressing Lan Wanzi's older brother, explaining that the boat's draft was lower, indicating extra weight. An inky black mass moves toward them beneath the surface, sending tidal waves with ghostly blue hands grasping at the cultivators. Lan Wanzi is caught off guard, while a glowing red blade cuts through the liquid appendages, saving him. Wei Wuxian replies Sui Bian, whatever, when it asks the sword's name. It has spirituality. Calling it so casually is disrespectful. But Wei Wuxian shows Lan Wanzi the inscription, laughing when he says it's absurd. Black hair-like tendrils move rapidly through the water, attacking the boats. The cultivators send their swords to attack whatever it is, provoking the creature. It attacks with tentacles made of water creating a swirling liquid tornado at the lake's center. It's a waterborne abyss. Wei Wuxian saves a cultivator who lost their sword in the depths, falling into the abyss himself. The black tendrils wrap around him. Surrounded by corpses, he considers harnessing the resentful energy. Before attempting it, Lan Wanzi pulls him above water by the collar. They suspect it came from somewhere else, most likely sent down river by the Wen clan. Lan Wanzi catches Wei Wuxian sneaking around with more Emperor's smile past curfew, telling him to take his punishment. When met with protest, Lan Wanzi draws his sword. Ditching the booze while fighting, they both fall outside after tackling the stickler. Despite promising not to tell, they both receive punishment the next morning. After defending Wei Wuxian's roguish behavior, recognizing he's a kid at heart, Lan Wanzi's older brother catches the three friends eavesdropping. He tells Wei Wuxian about their clan's healing cold spring. Finding Lan Wanzi already there, he tries making friends, conceding his respect for him. But when the fierce corpses, meant for teaching, escape, they get separated. Someone throws Lan Wanzi his gutsin, stopping the corpses in their tracks. But Wei Wuxian doesn't have any magic tools. Attempting to cultivate the resentful energy around him, it enters through his right arm, entering his golden core. Zhang Cheng throws him Suibian, noticing the energy swirling around his brother's arm as the sound of Lan Wanzi's Gutsin pierces the air. After the fierce corpses are dealt with, he hides his brother's hand from Lan Wanzi, only to furiously chew him out. What was he thinking? He'll be ostracized from the cultivation world. But Wei Wuxian agrees, promising never to use it again. While listening to a lecture on the founder of the Lan clan, a few of Jin Jiuxuan's fellow clan members gossip about women. He begins to leave at the mention of his fiancée, telling them not to bring it up again. Wei Wuxian punches him in the face when he insults his sister further, starting a brawl. 
the Zhang clan's leader personally comes to apologize and bring his adopted son home. Zhang Yanli is happy to see her brother, but her mother is another story. That night, Wei Wuxian overhears the clan leader discussing the possibility of dissolving the arranged marriage. Madame Yu compares it to their unhappy marriage, blaming the troublemaker for everything. Zhang Yanli consoles him, telling her brother he's not to blame. A year passes before Zhang Cheng comes home to Lotus Pier. Wei Wuxian pranks him, floating face down in the water, scaring his brother. They both laugh and talk about the discussion conference being held in Nightless Sky. The Qishan Wen clan is hosting the conference. One afternoon, Wei Wuxian meets a timid archer practicing for the competition, introducing himself as Wen Ning. As the five great clans gather, it becomes clear that the Wen clan places themselves above the rest of the cultivation world, recently subduing three clans in Beizang. The clan leaders are not happy, fearing the worst. Wen Ning is called out by the clan leader's youngest son, Wen Chao, and is kicked out, his nerves getting the best of him. Whoever hits the most feral ghost targets wins. After seeing the other clans cleaning up, Wen Chao decides to join the competition. Scoffing at the other competitors, after breaking the rules and harassing them, he refuses to bow out, firing at a young cultivator who speaks out against him. Lan Wanzi comes out of nowhere, sniping the arrows mid-air. While trying to get his attention, Wei Wuxian says his forehead ribbon is crooked and removes it accidentally. Lan Wanzi is horrified. Breaking his bow with one hand, he leaves the competition, confounding Wei Wuxian. Despite quitting, he still comes in fourth place, while Wei Wuxian takes first. Clan leader Wen Rohan takes his leave, infuriated that no one in his clan made the top four. The Wen clan begins annexing the smaller ones. Deciding to put the other four great clans in their place, he orders them to send 20 disciples each. At least one must be from the main family. There's another family feud at Lotus Pier, when Wei Wuxian has the choice to go unlike his brother. Despite volunteering, it angers Madame Yu, who takes it out on her husband and son, saying he'll never surpass him, still holding a grudge against Wei Wuxian due to the clan leader's favoritism. In Nightless Sky, Wei Wuxian notices the Lan clan's poise turned defeat. While confiscating their swords, one young cultivator refuses. A Wen jumps down, hand crackling with purple lightning, an open palm to the chest sends him flying. His golden core melts, shocking the rest. It's the infamous core-melting hand. He'll never cultivate again. This isn't mere training, it's indoctrination, forcing them to adhere to the Wen's teachings. While hunting for monsters, Wei Wuxian hears that the cloud recesses were burned to the ground. He offers to carry Lan Wanzi after hearing about his broken leg, but he refuses. Wei Wuxian saves a girl, Mian Mian, from Wen Chao's advances, but she's less than thrilled when he asks for one of her perfume pouches. Wen Chao's mistress finds the monster's lair and elects to use Mian Mian as bait out of jealousy. He threatens anyone who helps her with punishment. Lan Wanzi and Jin Jie Xuan refuse to move, provoking the Wens to attack. Wei Wuxian uses one of the Wens' proverbs against him. The penalty is death. He quickly subdues Wen Chao. The monster makes a timely entrance before he can do anything. Hearing Mian Mian scream, he rushes to save her, receiving a branding of the Wen clan's sun motif on his chest in her place. Wen Chao runs like a coward while the other clans are trapped after a cave-in. Wei Wuxian receives a perfume pouch out of gratitude. There are maple leaves in the pool, indicating a way out. Wei Wuxian and his brother dive, attempting to find the hole, waking up the monster. He holds its attention while the others escape. Suddenly, he's hit with an arrow to the right arm by a young Lan clan member. Though swearing it was an accident, his brother rocks the archer in the face outside as the Wens show up. Lan Wanzi couldn't leave him in the cavern to die. Trying to help, he gets caught in the creature's mouth, only mangling his leg further. Tending to their wounds, using the herbs from the perfume pouch, they both force each other to give up the tough guy act knowing the other is in pain. They can speak freely, without prying ears. Though Wei Yin is still taken aback when Lan Zan thanks him for the first time. 
it looks like that cold spring is heating up. They decide to kill it. Lan Zan notices a chink in its scale-like armor, but warns that this is no ordinary monster. It's the Tortoise of Slaughter. Having appeared 400 years ago, many tried and failed to kill the beast. They are injured. Waiting for help could take three to four days. Lan Zan interjects, help isn't coming. The cloud recesses has turned to ash. His composure breaks. Tears stream down his cheeks. His brother is missing, and his father is dying. Wei Ying tries to comfort Lan Zan, dropping formalities. Though, finding his composure, the plan is to wait three days. If nobody comes, they kill the beast. They set a trap using the Lan clan's court assassination technique. Wei Yin jumps in the water to bait the beast. A sword rests among skeletal remains, brimming with resentful energy. Grabbing the sword unleashes a torrent of red energy, lighting the cave, worrying Lan Zan. Resentful energy courses towards Wei Ying through the water, penetrating his golden core. Stirred from its slumber, the tortoise swallows him whole. Lan Zan calls out. Seeing the sword pierce the soft flesh, he sets the trap ablaze, decapitating the beast, as Wei Ying falls back into the depths. After saving Wei Ying from drowning, Lan Zan writes a song to keep him awake, calling it Wang Xian, a combination of their names. Unable to stay conscious, he awakens back home at Lotus Pier three days later, according to his sister. He asks about Lan Zan, but his brother talks about his journey and how dumb it was to take on that beast. Worried, he asks again. Apparently, Lan Wanzi is back in Gusu. His brother is still missing, and his father didn't make it. According to the clan leader, Wen Chao is taking credit for killing the tortoise, while Wei Wuxian and Lan Wanzi each give credit to the other. Zhang Cheng starts berating him about picking a fight with the Wens. Their father cautions him, happy with his brother's success. His own son doesn't quite grasp their clan's motto, attempt the impossible. Madame Yu still has it out for Wei Wuxian, saying he'll be the ruin of their clan. She can't stand the clan leader treating him better than her son. Rumors are spreading that he's not really adopted, and the clan leader is still harboring feelings for his mother. Leaving them alone, Zhang Cheng becomes irate. Of course, his father doesn't like him. He can't even stand his own wife, never receiving a pat on the back for walking home without resting just to save Wei Wuxian, who receives everyone's praise. Barely able to stand, he asks who said he's unfit to be the clan leader. Who cares about following the rules and some motto? The Lan clan has the twin jades. They'll be the twin heroes. He'll stand by him, no matter what. After the clan leader departs, Wen Chao's mistress shows up, claiming to be there to punish Wei Wuxian for leading the rebellion in the mountains. Madame Yu uses this as proof that she was right about him getting their clan in trouble, whipping him with Zhe Dian while his brother is held back. Asking for one of his hands, the mistress reveals their intentions of opening a Wen Clan supervisory office at Lotus Pier. Sending Madame Yu over the edge, she defends her clan, beating the lowly wench who believes she has power. She quickly dispatches the Wen guards when suddenly the core melting hand shows up, while the mistress signals Wen Chao, who's already waiting to lead a force large enough to destroy Lotus Pier. Upon seeing the purple barrier, the clan leader makes haste to return home. The two brothers help Madame Yu fend off the core melting hand. Refusing to let them stay and fight, she gives Zhan Cheng Zhe Dian, which binds them, making Wei Wuxian swear to protect him with his life. They notice the clan leader fly back on his sword, deciding to head back, thinking the tides will turn, but all they see are flames. Reaching the pier only to see piles of corpses, Wen Chao's wench tries to disrespect Madame Yu's corpse. The core melting hand tells her the purple spider was a formidable cultivator, worthy of their respect. Her body lay a few feet away from the clan leaders. Zhang Cheng wrestles with Wei Wuxian, biting his hand, almost giving their position away. Wen Ning distracts the others, and the brothers escape. Zhang Cheng blames Wei Wuxian, wrestling him to the ground, yelling as he chokes him, 
Why did he have to save Lan Wanzi and Xin Jishuan? He lets up when the gravity of the situation hits him and begins grieving. They begin the journey to find their sister. Now fugitives, their faces are plastered all over town. Wei Wuxian goes to find food, leaving his brother in an alley. The Wen clan already have patrols stationed. Lan Wanzi is sending young disciples to look for them. His great uncle disapproves, though his uncle, the boy's instructor, sides with his nephew. The clans need to band together in opposition. It's not a question of if they will turn on the rest. It's only a matter of when. They find Zhang Yanli quickly enough, but there's still no word on her brothers or on Lan Wanzi's. Wei Wuxian panics when he returns to find Zhang Cheng missing from the alley where he left him. He returns to Lotus Pier, fearing the worst. He finds him unconscious, but alerts the guards. Falling off the roof, they're pulled into a room. Holding the Wen by the throat, anger plastered on Wei Wuxian's face. It's the young archer, Wen Ning. Letting his guard down for a moment when someone else enters, it's Wen Ning's sister. She gets rid of the guards, promising to help them until Wen Chao returns. It's a good thing she despises him, though she's not too happy about hiding fugitives. Zhang Chung wakes up, asking his brother if he feels it, putting a hand on his chest. His spiritual energy, it's gone. His golden core melted. Wei Wuxian convinces him that his mother's old master will restore his golden core. They weren't able to recover the bodies of their dead, only a few belongings. Once they reach a secluded mountain, Wei Wuxian tells Zhang Cheng to wear a blindfold, stressing that he must never take it off. If he breaks that taboo, the ceremony won't work. Stick in hand, he climbs the mountain like a blind man, while Wei Wuxian waits at the base. After a few days, the core-melting hand comes out of nowhere. Wen Chao's sword pierces his chest. Something's off. The bodyguard stares at his hand briefly before moving on, dropping his clarity bell as he's dragged from the summit. Wei Wuxian threatens to return as a vengeful ghost as Wen Chao throws him into the Yiling burial mounds, a sealed-off mass grave due to its resistance to purification. Lan Wanzi stumbles across the Clarity Bell during his search soon after, though unable to confirm he's still among the living. The rest of the great clans meet when Zhang Cheng appears, golden core intact, along with Lan Wanzi's brother, finally out of hiding. A small army backs them, ready to march against the Wen clan's tyranny. The Nia clan's leader announces the beginning of the Sunshot campaign. Meanwhile, at the burial mounds, Wei Wuxian crawls, barely alive. He's surrounded by resentful energy. Suddenly, he's back at Lotus Pier, then meeting Lan Wanzi for the first time. It all fades away as red and black resentful energy penetrate his waning frame. A hole filled with red liquid opens beneath him, tendrils like arms reaching up, entering his eyes and mouth. Remembering the slaughter at Lotus Pier, he resists. At first, the Sunshot campaign is more like a shot in the dark. When Wen Chao's older brother is beheaded in battle, the tide begins to turn in the resistance's favor. There are rumors of demonic forces eliminating the supervisory offices set up by the Wen clan. Both Zhang Cheng and Lan Wanzi witness similar horrific scenes. Usually, spirit-repelling talismans are drawn with cinnabar. But Lan Wanzi notices the stroke order is reversed, with four more written with human blood. Instead of exorcising, these talismans summon evil. The brush strokes were all drawn by the same hand. Reuniting with his sister, at last, he still hasn't found Wei Wuxian after coming down the mountain. A Wen spy lights a signal, revealing the location of the hidden rebel base. Wen Chao leaves his mistress behind, joining the fight. But it's too late. Two fierce corpses are enough to take care of her. The Wen clan overtakes the base camp, capturing Zhang Chung. While Lan Wanzi makes his last stand, Wen Chao taunts him, revealing Wei Wuxian is dead, especially after throwing him into the burial mounds. Furious, he takes his Gu Tin in hand, using the last of his strength for a direct attack. 
it's no use, as the core melting hand nullifies the last ditch effort. All hope is lost. Zhang Chung and Lan Wanzi are surrounded by Wens, prepared to meet their fate. The sound of a flute pierces the air. The orange flames that lick the rubble turn an ominous green. Dozens of crows swarm overhead as the dead begin to stir. The newly risen fierce corpses begin to attack, though only members of the Wen clan. Despite their sinister methods, the mysterious cultivator seems to be an ally. They come down to face Wen Chao, who's cowering behind the core melting hand. Attacking leaves his arm broken and twisted, having his own golden core removed and shattered before his eyes. Wei Wuxian is back with a vengeance. Wen Chao tries to escape as his undead mistress attacks. Another flurry of notes skewers both on shards protruding from the ground, resentful energy piercing their bodies like spears until mere pieces remain. Snapping out of it, he notices Lan Wanzi. Despite the price of walking the heretic path, he'll pay it, no matter the cost. Warning how it harms the body, the user's temperament, he spits back his own words. What does his temperament have to do with the others? Lan Wanzi is torn, asking him to come back to cloud recesses with him, refusing, thinking it's some form of arrest. Claiming he can control it, Wei Wuxian disperses the resentful energy lingering in the aftermath of the battle. Zhang Chung steps in, telling Lan Wanzi he has no right to discipline a member of the Zhang clan. Conflicted, on the verge of tears, Lan Wanzi takes his leave. They return home, retaking Lotus Pier, but they're in a deadlock with the Wen clan. He remembers the cursed sword in the cave with the Tortoise of Slaughter. If only he could cultivate it. Sixteen years later, Wei Wuxian suddenly wakes up in Moa Shen Yu's body again and finds himself in the cloud recesses, discovering Emperor's smile under the floorboards when two young cultivators call on him. Upon hearing talk of his past deeds, he sees a reflection of his former self in the water, regretting cultivating the sword and creating the Yian Tiger Tally. Thank you for sticking until the end. Subscribe for more videos like this.